Shaky handheld footage is not necessarily a bad thing. You can use it purposefully and strategically so that when you combine it with a stabilized gimbal shot, it delivers even more of an impact. so cute. <laughs> it's so little. Seriously. <gasps> it's so cute. So just recently, Jayun sent me the Crane M2. It's this tiny little gimbal for phones and action cameras, and it even will hold my little Canon M50. So it's the first gimbal that I've ever had, and I went out to test it with my friend Schaefer, and it really made me think about why I use the shots I do in my videos. It made me realize that there's a time and a place for both handheld shaky footage and for super smooth stabilized footage. So depending whether you're filming handheld or on a gimbal, each style of filming is going to convey a little bit of a different type of emotion or a different mood. So let's start with the benefits of filming handheld. So first and foremost, Filming handheld is just convenient. It's really easy to just pull out the camera and start filming. It's the most likely way to get me out filming is if all I have to do is grab my camera and get some shots. Because oh, oh. <laughs> there's a like, like this right here is like a wire that goes into it. <laughs> but it's home. <laughs> you, you have to ask yourself, why you're shooting what you're shooting, um, which requires a little bit of forethought, which is really, I don't think it's really me or Jake's style at all to think about things before you shoot it, really. The shaky footage is really good because it gives this like really intimate sort of, uh, not, not necessarily home video, but it feels like you're there. So the real question is just like, why am I shooting what I'm shooting? Uh, you know, am I doing it for just the fact that it's on a gimbal? Did I buy a gimbal just to throw my camera on a gimbal and use it all the time? Or do I actually need this look for the tone that I'm trying to convey? I think there's pros and cons to both, but I honestly think if you are, uh, if you practice enough knowing when they're appropriate, those pros and cons will kind of disappear because you'll just know when you need it and you'll know when you don't. When you have just a little bit of natural shake, it, it kind of makes it feel very genuine. It makes you feel as if you're a person in the scene watching things happen. I think there's also something to be said for how people act around cameras. Now, if you're making a movie in Hollywood, it doesn't matter because you're working with professionals that are used to being in front of cameras. But if you're just filming a YouTube video with your friends, they're gonna be a lot more comfortable around an iPhone or a tiny M50 than if you have a DSLR on a gimbal with a cage and a microphone on it. That's gonna make everyone feel really weird and you're definitely gonna lose the authenticity that you would get if you were just filming on a more minimal setup. Now one of my favorite things to do with my videos is start with that shaky handheld look and, and you gain some, some authenticity and it kind of immerses the viewer to feel like they're a part of the scene. And then, once you have that established, you can use a super stable gimbal shot to deliver an impact. So with that, I think that's the main benefit of super smooth, stable footage, is it's really good at delivering an impact and kind of being a wow factor. I think that a stabilized gimbal shot can make it feel a bit surreal or a bit dreamlike, or it can even make it feel a bit more powerful. Rather than being super genuine, it can provide a bit more power to the, to the feeling of the shot. So as I was using this thing with Schaefer, I realized how much more a gimbal forces you to, to plan out your shot and to think about what camera motion you wanna get and how you wanna capture the scene. 
If you're just running around with a camera on a gimbal all the time, you're kind of losing the purpose of the gimbal. You're just gonna have an endless, boring, stable shot. But if you really plan it out to get a specific movement, um, that's when you can really benefit from a gimbal and get that dreamlike, powerful, captivating shot. So I think above all else, I just want to dispel the myth that you have to have a gimbal to create videos. It's not true at all. You definitely do not need a gimbal to make videos. But once you use it as a tool in your entire toolkit, it can be really powerful to create a specific mood. So if you have any tips or ideas about shooting handhelds or with a gimbal and maybe how you use each one and what you use each method for, I'd love to hear about those. I seriously love just like learning about filmmaking and talking about it with all you guys. So this is probably the last video for 2019. So. Thank you so much for any and all of you that have joined along for any part of this year. It's just been so much fun making videos. I'm more stoked than I ever have been to make videos and to keep learning and growing. So thank you for being here. I hope you have the best holiday season in the world and I'll see you next year. Awesome, thanks. I